Hello, everybody. Hey, good morning. Thanks for joining. Let's give it a couple minutes for more folks to join. Hey, Ricardo, how are you? Welcome hey, back. Morning. Hey, everyone. I posted a link on the chat. It's the meeting notes. If you can please add yourself as an attendee. All right, I think we can get started. Um, we, have, we have a couple of items on the agenda. We have the eraser project applying for Sandbox. And I think we have um, Cube Marine. They're also applying for Sandbox. So I guess this is, um, you know, kind of like an overview of the project and maybe any questions that the, the the maintainers or the members of the project have and they can actually be brought up and and they can also present uh, you know what what they're thinking about or, or if they have any slides or anything that they'd like to talk about uh, uh, yeah well, hello. So. Hello, Ricardo. so let me introduce myself my name is Igor and also I have Sergey and Pranav here so we represent Cube Marine Tool um, and basically, we represent a uh, Netcracker company. So let me give some overview of the Acute Marine tool. Uh, Netcracker uh, so, company. Sorry, sorry, Igor. I, I think uh, it, let me because Eraser was is first on the agenda. So can we actually go over Eraser first? And oh, I'm sorry. I thought that uh, we, we should start with the Cube Marine. Okay, sure. I'm sorry. Yeah, just, sure. Because I just wanted to to For follow sure. the order. No, no, not a problem. Yeah. I can uh, I can speak to Eraser whenever uh, folks are are ready for that. Are we uh, we good to go? I don't want to. We good? Okay, cool. There's a thumbs up. Um, sounds good. Let me just adjust my camera real quick. There we go. Oh, okay. Hi everyone. Um, I'm Xander. I'm. Uh, I'm an open source product manager at Microsoft, and uh, I've got a uh, a small coalition here with me today to talk about Eraser, which we are putting up for sandbox status. Um, I'm gonna just get a screen share going real quick. We've got just a short little presentation and then a demo as well. Sounds great. Right. All right, can everyone see everything okay? Cool, silence yep. is gold. Yep. Um, all right, so I'm gonna talk a little bit about Eraser today. Um, so just a quick background on the development of this tool. Um, so within Microsoft, there is a internal tool that alerts users if they have images cached on any of their Kubernetes nodes that contain vulnerabilities. And so users would regularly receive alerts for these images and, you know, they would just get like a, a, a giant report, like hammered alert after alert after alert. And we found that teams were often developing 
various different approaches to handle this. Uh, most often a cron job that just goes and deletes old images off nodes. But each of these teams ended up kind of writing the same cron job over and over again. Um, a lot of repeated work to solve a common problem. Um, so we developed a racer and here's just a quick architecture overview. And I know this is just like a big diagram and it's, it's kind of small. I couldn't make it fit right on the slides. So just bear with me on this. Um, the high level overview is that a racer is a controller that runs on your cluster and spawns these image jobs on each node in the cluster. And each of those image jobs is going to collect the images that are not running, scan them using a pluggable scanner tool uh, like Trivi, and then remove those images from the node. And it does this by uh, interfacing directly with the container runtime on the node. Um, so I'm going to just pass it over to Ashna from my team to do a quick demo. Okay. Can everyone see the demo? Yes, we can see it. Looks good. Um, so for the demo, we're going to create a pine cluster and run the eraser project on it. Um, so forward this a little bit. So we're creating a kind cluster with one node, and we're going to load this node with vulnerable image. Um, so we're going to create the cluster and then apply a daemon set. So we're applying the Alpine 3.7.3 .3 image, and um, that is a known vulnerable image. Um, so we're going to just check that that completed. And then we're going to delete the daemon set so that the Alpine image is present as a vulnerable and non-running image in our cluster. And then we can check that that deleted. And then we can also check the node one more time and make sure that the Alpine image is present. Um, so now that that's present, we're going to install a racer to detect this image and remove it from the cluster. So we're using Helm to install it, and this should schedule two pods. One will be the eraser manager, and the other would be the collector pod. And since we have one node, there's one collector pod. Um, and this collector pod has three containers. It has a collector container to um, collect a list of all the non-running images in the node. And it passes that information on to the scanner container, which uses Trivi to um, scan that list of non-running images and figure out which images were vulnerable. And then the Trivi container passes that information to the eraser container to remove those images um, if they are non-running. So these three containers um, basically communicate with each other and work chronologically. Um, and then the collector pods finish pretty quickly. So if we check again, the collector pod is completed and we can check the node again and we should see the Alpine image isn't present um, on the node. Um, so that's a quick overview of Eraser. And by default, this would run every 24 hours, um, but that can be changed for whatever fits the user's needs. Um, and there's different configurations, so you can use different scanners and plug them in. Um, or also remove the scanner altogether if you want to do a prune of the stale images. Um, and you can also run eraser on demand with a list of images that you supply. So it's pretty easy to use and configurable for your clusters. How, do, how does it know the, so this is a question. So how, do, how does it know the, the images that it needs to delete? Is there a conf, config map or something? Or? 
um, it, it scans the images with Trivi, um, and then Trivi passes. Oh, I see. I see. So if it, it if it finds like a vulnerable images, then it deletes them basically. And mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, got it. And and I guess you can specify the options in Trivi to say I only want to delete the images that have high and critical vulnerabilities or something, right? So yes. yeah. Okay, got it. Exactly. And as Ashna mentioned, there's also an alternative mode, which is kind of like delete on demand, and you can supply. Um, a list of images that you want to target and remove if they end up being cached on the node. Um, and if you truly just want it to prune on demand, you can just pass it a wildcard, just a star, and it will remove everything that's not running. Got it, got it. All right, just a couple last things we wanted to mention. Um, I have to get to the right slide to do that. Um, so we did want to, so one of the questions that we regularly get with this is um, how this differs from the native garbage collection that's in Kubernetes. Um, people tend to ask about that. And the the garbage collection that Kubernetes does is informed primarily by disk usage. Um, so the default behavior would be once disk usage reaches 85% on a node, it's going to trigger garbage collection and it's going to take it down to 80% and then stop. That is configurable by kubelet flags, but that's that's the default behavior. Um, Eraser uses vulnerability data by default, um, which kind of just provides another dimension to make decisions on, on how to remove images rather than just strictly disk usage. Um, and then the last part would be, um, in some cases, there would be images not managed by Kubelet, and that's primarily like preloaded images that might be present on um, uh, like a VM image from a cloud provider, um, things like that, that are not under Kubelet's management that could have vulnerabilities that surface that Eraser would take care of. Um, and lastly, we want to just touch on why we're going forward with the CNCF application. Um, and that is two at once. Um, so when we started developing Eraser, um, the intent was always for it to be an open project for the ecosystem. Um, we are interested in having a, a vendor neutral home for, for the project. Like we definitely don't want it to be seen as a Microsoft owned project where, where you know, it's, it's a, we see it as a community effort and a community project. Um, and secondly, um, Ashna kind of touched on the, the pluggable scanner providers for Eraser. Um, we think that with the neutral home and uh, being part of CNCF, it, it would better encourage the development of community integrations for Eraser in the form of additional scanners. Um, we do have, nope, wrong slide. Um, there it is. We do have this uh, template repo um, for developing additional scanners that exist today. Um, so I just wanted to, to kind of touch on that in case anyone is interested in, in having a look at, at how developing an additional provider works. Um, and with that, happy to answer any questions that folks have about the project. Yeah, I think this looks good. I mean, uh... I mean, I think a lot of the folks on the call are probably familiar with the sandbox application processes. Generally, the the bar is not that high, uh, but it's just kind of like a place where projects can mature over time. And I guess the project can benefit from some of the CNCF umbrella activities. I have a question. So um, I'd like to learn a little bit more about how you can configure Eraser to use potentially different uh, erasing techniques. So, I mean, the built-in one is to do security scanning. Um, how configurable is this kind of subsystem? Like, could I, could I put some other type of uh, tool uh, in the end uh, that would allow me to determine whether 
you know, whether it's a, a pod or a staple set or, you know, the, the actual OCI image itself is replaceable, removable. Is that, is that something entirely configurable and how configurable is it? Um, I can take that one. So vulnerability scanning is only the kind of first application that we envisioned, but really the configurable piece, um, it, reads a list of images from a well-known location and then produces um, the images to remove at another well-known location. So it doesn't really need to uh, scan for vulnerabilities at all. It could be any logic that the user wants. Um, it's just a big old filter function. Um, this is what's present versus this is what you should remove. And the logic can be anything you want it to be. Um, and the configurable piece. So that's why we have the scanner template. It makes it easier to read from that well-known location right to the other well-known location. Um, you can supply your own logic and then um, package that as an image and then supply that to the um, system-wide config map. So say, use this image as the scanner and it will um, do as you say. Does that answer your question? Is there, or is there anything else? I think no, yeah, that, that definitely answers the question. Um, but can I also ask, um, is it just images that I can scan? Like, um, uh, and maybe also what level is it scanning at? You, you talked about briefly the, like maybe it's the container runtime. Uh, so this kind of, that's a lower level than usually Kubernetes. So that, you know, you that's host instrumentation or is it just at the Kubernetes level? Um, we we use the container runtime interface, um, and so, it, it, so this is been, this is exposed by Kubernetes, basically. Yes, yes, and it's been okay. primarily tested with um, container D, because you know most of the time that's the runtime being used. But um, in theory, if the CRI implementations for um, other runtimes are are correct, then Eraser would. Um, to work with those as well. Okay, the reason I ask is because I can see additional potential resources being eventually exposed through Kubernetes um, that could have, you know, have a wider application. You could provide logic, for example, for cleaning up um, different types of, I don't know, whatever the, the resource is, not just necessarily that comes to the CRI. Um, the CRI is obviously a great first use case, um, but I'm thinking, you know, it could even be like host specific things or, uh, you know, put, long running jobs that you just want to kill. Like, I don't know, you literally anything, right? That you couldn't schedule with Kubernetes. I'll add to that we have kind of talked about um, applications for cleaning up images um, beyond just using like vulnerability data. Like there's been discussions on like, what if we were to clean up images that didn't have like an S-bomb attached to them? Um, it is, uh, composable in that way where like expanding to that sort of functionality in the future would be would be feasible. Great. Thanks. And this answers my question. So a related question. Uh, can you integrate with other container image scanners besides Trivi? Or just no, it's just Trivi and and your item support for others in the future. Yeah, similar to um, other uh, uh, previous discussion on um, expandability, you could um, simply write another scanner and, and um, just use um, Gripe or, or whatever you want um, to scan those images. Um, so yeah, works uh, again, just a, a filter function. So you just supply the logic, use this scanner. Um, if you want to use it as a library, you can do that if you want to just, you know, call a command which runs it runs the provided binary on the image. That's fine too. Makes sense. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Um, and as Xander mentioned, this is why we see because of its um, uh, pluggability. This is uh, why we see um, membership with the CNCF as as a good opportunity to get people to use it in in different ways and expand its functionality. Awesome. A any other questions from the audience? More questions, the better. <laughs>
thank you all for the time. Um, if there are additional questions that pop up, uh, eraser channel in Kubernetes Slack. Um, feel free to, to pop by and ask. Sounds good. <clears throat> All right, I think uh, we have the other item in our agenda is the Cube Marine project, which is a Kubernetes distribution. I think, um, was it Igor? Yeah. 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 Go ahead. Yeah. Thank you. Well, once again, hello. Um, yeah, let me give some background on Cube Marine. Um, Netcracker company has been developing OSS and BSS cloud native products since, I guess, 2015. And some time ago, we decided to share our experience and best practices with the community and with the world. And uh, the Kubemarine, one of the first of our uh, tools, uh, previously proprietary tool uh, that we share with the community. Uh, Yes, indeed, this is a uh, K8S uh, manager and installer. And let me share some slides, just a second. Uh, right, so, yes, yeah. Yeah, so th that's that's the open source tool, uh, and it can uh, check the environment before the Kubernetes deployment. Uh, make sure that uh, all prerequisites uh, was uh, implemented in advance. Then perform installation, maintenance, upgrade. Uh, such procedures like adding nodes, uh, removing nodes, etc. Uh, and after the installation, it can also check that everything works right. Uh, we have embedded checks that make sure that uh, the environment uh, comply with the enterprise uh, enterprise best practices. So uh, uh, the Cube Marine actually, this is a, a single binary uh, application written on Python. And then uh, it can be installed either by downloading executable from the open source uh, sources or by uh, using PyP, that's also possible. Uh, and it has several, you know, important features. Uh, the first one, as I mentioned earlier, uh, it is, uh, you know, accumulate all our best practices uh, based on the enterprise uh, net tracker uh, deliverables uh, and project. Uh, we have a set of defaults and uh, recommendations that uh, implemented uh, in the code. Uh, it supports a set of uh, different deployment schemas, uh, like all-in-one, which is useful for development purposes, or POCs, uh, mini HA schema, like when you have three, for instance, three uh, nodes that uh, combine uh, control to the working model. Um, and uh, the classic scheme of OHA, and also we support the just recovery scheme based on the two you know, distributed clusters. And uh, the manager that can uh, execute switch around for lower procedures between these two clusters. Uh, yeah, so basically, this tool is based on. Uh, so yeah, this slide is based on uh, QBAdm. That's a kind of wrapper on top of QBAdm, and uh, uh, another another important advantage advantage of this tool is uh, it is possible to install the custom plugins written uh, either on Ansible or with uh, Helm 
um, deploy or other. So as part of uh, Kubernetes installation, you can add another another custom plugins that was installed that, that will be installed as part of the installation of the Kubernetes. Um, so what else? And just a second, I had another one important slide. Yeah, um, this tool is able to upgrade uh, Kubernetes version, uh, smoothly upgrade the Kubernetes version uh, through the one or even two versions of the Kubernetes. So you run, so if you have uh, Kubernetes 1.18 and you run, and you would like to upgrade to 1.18, you can run the installation and it will execute everything uh, we need to perform this installation smoothly without any uh, interaction or uh, participation of, uh, of the human. So uh, basically that's the generic general information about this tool. Uh, the only thing we can do, we can try to execute demo based on the either our CI CD, we have Kubernetes CI CD, the cluster. The real cluster. We can uh, show you the installation uh, on prem on our uh, virtual machines uh, inside NetBreaker if we have time and if you have time for this. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, sorry, you 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 mentioned you have a demo, right? So yeah, we we, we can we can run uh, the demo. Uh, either by running the CI CD uh, because the CI CD deploys the real cluster uh, on the virtual machine, or we can uh, show you the demo that deploys uh, a Kubernetes cluster on prem uh, on a private environment. Yeah, up to you. I mean, it's 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 open. Uh, okay. All right. So that's our CI CD. Uh, uh, actually, we can only see your slides. I don't, I don't oh, know. I'm sorry. I just, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. You're right. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. The, the, the important, important steps that I mentioned before is the check yes and check pass. So before installation, we check that everything uh, comply with our requirements. Uh, you see some warnings that, that, uh, display that the resource is not enough to deploy uh, the uh, fully functional Kubernetes cluster because we use some small, teeny, even teeny machines. Uh, but anyway, so we check that everything is okay, warrants is uh, uh, acceptable. Then we install the Kubernetes. Uh, let me see the time. 34. Yeah, it, it took five minutes. And after that, I'm sorry, I, will, yeah, I should collapse this. And after that, we check that everything went right. So still some warnings, another warnings, but in general, the installation was uh, successful. So let, let me rerun this uh, installation just to make sure that we still can deploy Kubernetes. So that's the installation of KubeMarine with the, with the all dependencies. Actually, we use a pure CICD infrastructure uh, out of the box. So no extra VMs. And it's pretty enough for at least all-in-one installation, simplest one. Yeah, now the check IIS uh, part uh, has been executed.
One question that I have about just overall about the project. Uh, yep. I mean, there's quite a few tools to deploy Kubernetes, and this one is based on KubeADM. Mm -hmm. And there's some other tools like Kine and Minikube and, and whatnot. Um, uh, is there anything different or, or something that you can think of that that Cube Marine does that some of the these other projects don't or or they're very similar this is just like a a, a different alternative uh so yeah actually uh uh before start any development of course we have tried to take a look on some other tools uh, so we did some research um some measurement and uh, briefly speaking according to our requirements internal requirements we decided to do our own a bit our own i mean a bit because it is anyway it is based on kuban and uh, why why uh first of all it is uh simplicity simplicity of usage which is pretty important for us uh, so uh, you can use this simple very simple inventory file with a few number of lines and you can have a cluster and after that you can scale it on top of any enterprise ready solution so the simplicity first option uh another uh first point another point we what we need we need to uh, to support a number of uh, specific third parties which we are going to use for example we use uh, only one in Jinx ingress controller, Jinx based, and that's all. So we have a number of limited uh, third parties which we manage, we care, we uh, test, validate, uh, and uh, in that case, uh, the Kube Marine provides the, let's say, complete distribution with a number of tested and validated tools. I mean. I mean, we can compare with Coop Spray. It uh, supports uh, tons of third parties, tons of tools, right? We support a uh, uh, limited number. And uh, it is also uh, fast enough, faster than Coop Spray. For example, it is Python based. We uh, love, Py love Python infrastructure. We have uh, a lot of experience with Python and uh, it's very welcome to have a Python code, which is easy to use, manage, uh, debug, develop, and provide uh, some hot fixes and so on. And uh, so basically that's uh, the options we had considered to do something our own based. So basically this is a, now it is a single tool, single binary. Let's say it's kind of a wrapper on top of Kubadm. Uh, and Kubadm provides uh, node management and uh, Kub, uh, Kub Marine provides cluster management. Of course, it is open source. Uh, welcome to contribute, communicate. And uh, what else is important it, uh, is it reflects our enterprise experience. So we have a number of uh, uh, Parameters, configurations, which we updated to it according to our uh, experience, implementation experience. We have uh, actually uh, some huge clusters inside in uh, our environment with uh, several, with a lot of nodes. I mean, they're really huge. And we, uh, let's say, reflected all our expectation experience in this tool and uh, did i answer your question in some way yeah i think if you're the answer yeah that was pretty extensive so do you also interact with the apis of the cloud providers or, or, or this is mainly for clusters on bare metal uh mostly uh it is for on-prem uh, deployment for bare metal yeah not only bare metal of course we use a uh, uh, yas infrastructure but uh, 
we need a pure Linux VM to install uh, Kubernetes, mostly for on-prem. Yes, for now, at that moment, we have several uh, points to consider in the future. How we're going to develop, how we're going to, uh, what we're going to add, some options. But for now, it is mostly for on-prem installations. Yeah, it makes sense. And another follow-up is, um, uh, how do you currently have um, any end users uh, using the project, or this is mainly your organization uh, using this project? We have, we have three uh, large Middle East telecom customers that also use our tool uh, on their uh, private environments. Uh, but I'm not sure that I can disclose the names. At least I, I should check it with the legal department. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, no, just, yeah. just curious. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. So, any questions so far, guys? Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, in terms of what's the difference between other tons of. Uh, yeah, yeah, for us, uh, it is important to, to that, that is a tool, tool to be uh, simple enough, fast enough. Yeah. So it is super uh, based on our experience, uh, on our uh, uh, based on our internal environment and external environments that we manage uh, to uh, that we manage to support. Uh, it is super easy to support this tool. It is super easy to integrate with uh, uh, customers' CICD process, and uh, it's super easy to deliver this tool to the customers and to our internal environment. And so that's the main advantages on the other projects. Got it. Honestly, honestly we had previously we had uh, the uh, OKD Open Shift. Uh, open source open shift uh, installer based on the Ansible. And we decided never, never to use Ansible for the installation purposes of the open shift because we had so many troubles with Ansible itself. So we decided to use Python instead. All right, so installation has completed. Yeah, it took six minutes to deploy a simple cluster. Uh, everything went right, went well. And here's the check PS uh, after the installation. So it shows some warnings, but this is okay. Yeah, and uh, looking at the CICD, as you can see, we support a number of Kubernetes in uh, one binary. So, so for, exa for example, here is the list of Kubernetes we support in this tool, and you may ask why we have so many. So let's say this is for internal purposes. We we have to some projects we have some requirements and they cannot update the latest one and so on. So we support tons of Kubernetes and actually it is very easy to update to the new one. Not only Kubernetes but other third party, for example, to adopt uh, latest uh, ingress controller and so on. We have our own uh, testing environment, not only in GitHub and also in, internally. So we test it, validate it, and uh, provide our results uh, in community. So if we see uh, here uh, updated version, so that means uh, we have internally tested very carefully in single in, in several schemas and with uh, additional QA efforts, let's say. So uh, that, that's it from our side, I believe. Any other questions? Yeah, thank you. Have you applied for Sandbox already or are you in the process? Uh, we just raised the request to apply for the sensor. Yeah, we are waiting for, for the decision. Yeah, we have applied, but we're waiting for the decision. That makes sense. 
yeah, I think you should expect to hear maybe in the next month or so. I think the meetings happen uh, once a month. So. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Not yeah, but I think it might be delayed a little bit because we had we just had KubeCon so last sure. 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 Um, All right. So I any, thank you very much. Questions, uh, uh, from anybody in the audience, anything that they want to bring up or any other items that they want to bring up. Uh, I was just wondering when we're planning on moving forward with the WASM working group stuff. Uh, yeah, I think the, the PR is ready. So there wasn't an agenda item to discuss that uh, in this meeting, but uh, the PR is open. I, I think we're in a process of finding people interested in becoming chairs and tech leads for the group. Uh, uh, I think uh, Heba has collected a list um I, I don't know if she's available and maybe she can provide a, a short update on that yeah hi everyone so uh we have the pr open um for the draft charter for the work group for the wasm so for now we we have the floor for everyone to um to uh you know like um share their interest about being uh, a co-chair or a tech lead or just a member for this working group after we collect all the feedback or you know like having a good amount of time for everyone to show this interest we will uh, put an um, an item in the agenda for the tag run time to uh, you know, like discuss uh, the the co-chair uh, positions and the tech leads and that we can, uh, you know, like kick, you know, like starting uh, the effort for the WASM uh, working group. But really your feedback is more than welcome to have like a very dedicated, uh, you know, like um, uh, it's like OKRs or let's, let's say, you know, like something to deliver from this working group. So let's let's work together, uh, you know, like to have this, uh, you know, like um, very well fine so we can have like a, a good a good work uh, once we start. It. But this sounds good. Sounds great. I missed the uh, PR, I think. Uh, I will I will paste the, the PR uh, URL here. Cool. Uh and we do have a working document, uh, Heba, do you, uh, is, is that actually um, publicly shared already or, or it's just shared between a small group? It is shared uh, in the, in the uh, actually in the issue itself. Okay. And uh, I shared it here as well. Yeah, so so we, we're working through the charter, right? So we'd like to get as much feedback as possible from the community in terms of what has to be in the charter or what are some of the things that the working group should tackle um and, yeah and it's just wide open right now and we like to um, you know add all the details and anything that that people are thinking about and and finalize it and and, and, and also include all the the chairs and the tech leads and once that's finalized the next step will be to send it over to the toc uh to get it approved through a vote uh, but i think uh with regards to the tech leads and the co-chairs it might be a good idea if you're interested to um to state you know why you want to be a co-chair and what you plan to do and 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 yeah what uh what you think uh, would be a, a good direction for the work, working group and, and how you, you plan to do or plan to go about it. Does that make sense? Makes sense to me. Thank you. All right. So uh, any other final things before we uh, 
end the meeting. Uh, it looks like Karen has a question in the chat. Oh, yeah. So uh, Karen's question is, should we just watch the agenda to know when the co-chair tech leads discussion will come up? Uh, yeah, I think so. Yeah. So, I mean, uh, for the, the TAC runtime meeting notes and when we add that item to the agenda. But I think, you know, like Heba said, uh, continue to monitor the the issue and the charter. Yeah, I think uh, we will uh, we will share, you know, like uh, once the time, you know, like uh, comes uh, in the issue and then in the Slack channel as well. Uh, that we will going to discuss, uh, you know, like the working group for Wasm next meeting, and uh, we will share the dates and timing, of course. And again, I appreciate your feedback. So let's work together to define uh, like the right scope and the right deliverables so we can work together to have this done. All right, so looks like no more questions. Thank you, everyone. We have a meeting scheduled next week. If you're interested, uh, the Cube Edge is going to give a presentation on the graduation. So they're planning to go to the graduation step in the CNCF. So feel free to join if you're interested. If not, then we'll still see you around. Thank you. Have a good day. Thanks, everyone. Cheers. Thank Bye. You. Bye. Have a good day. Bye. Thank you, everyone. Have a good day.